I'm doing a giveaway. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can enter to win. What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given and today I wanted to take a look at a Potion Master game where I play things a little bit differently. I've got kind of a spicy game brewed up here with the Potion Master and forgot to record the first few seconds of it, but I wind up picking up a Wizard's Familiar and a free roll to kick things off and that's going to give me a 2-2 Wizards Familiar and what makes this game different than a typical Potion Master game and I've been thinking about Potion Master a lot recently in that I think Potion Master is a very flexible hero which generally means pretty powerful. There's a lot of different play styles that Potion Master can play and one that I typically don't explore that often is just Tempo Potion Master. Trying to cast spells every turn, targeted spells specifically, to pump up some of my characters and continue to win these combats. Now, one of the reasons that I don't typically go for that is Potion Master can also do a lot of other really fun stuff but I wanted to see how things went when we just cast as many spells as possible and tried to grab as big of units as possible. So we're going to see me fire off the Genie's Wish here, which gives plus two, plus two to Wizards Familiar and plus two, plus two to Sherwood Sure Shot. So it's hard to say that that isn't worth it. And then I'm gonna end this turn by picking up a goat and moving my characters to the front row so that way Mad Mim can support them a little bit and hopefully we can get some multiple attacks off here with this Sherwood Sure Shot, and Sherwood Sure Shot actually just totally crushes this combat, takes out my opponent's Wizards Familiar, and leaves us unscathed. So, now we are on 3.0, and I do think that Prize Pig is probably a pretty reasonable pickup here, and from there, I'm gonna cast some more spells. Now, typically, I would do something here like pick up some units, pick up the Sherwood Sure Shot, pick up... Um, I probably would have just picked up the pig and the Sherwood Shore Shop, but one thing that is interesting about playing this strategy and one of the reasons that I drift a little bit heavier into this strategy this game, talked about this a little bit before, when you are playing Tempo and you are playing Prized Pig, the tempo allows you to support the prize pig and then continue to build a stronger and stronger board as the game moves on. So that was basically the thought process here. If we cast all of these targeted spells, we're probably going to have our prize pig survive and walk away from this combat with a little bit of extra spending money. And then on this turn, I'm just going to pick up three things from the shop. I'm going to pick up the Cindy and the Wizards Familiar because they're mages. And then I'm going to pick up the Ogre Princess and cast a spell on it. Tick down onto Cindy, power up the Wizards Familiars, pretty basic stuff. And I do think that we are still probably strong enough at this point in the game. With an 8-8 Wizards Familiar, a 6-4 Ogre Princess, a 4-3 ranged unit, that our prize pig is probably surviving, though we are weaker than last turn. And then I guess we also have a 4-9 uh, Goat as well. Uh, we could potentially play the Mad Mim in this combination still, pump up the Cindy and the Goat or something like that. That could be reasonable, but I felt like this would probably be strong enough. And it looks like it is going to be strong enough to not only win the combat, but also take some prize pig gold from my opponent. So we're doing pretty nice stuff. We got the Econ from Prized Pig, and we even got a little bit of Econ from Ogre Princess. I'm going to cast another spell on the Goat. That is going to turn it into a mummy once again. Always a little bit weird when that happens. Then I'm like, eh, maybe I should try to pick up some tier three characters, try to find a crystal ball or a Merlin's hat. I am definitely dedicated to tempo, but it's not terrible to play these other things. And right now I'm noticing that I am up against a undefeated fallen angel this turn. And for that reason, I might not want to play the prized pig and just donate some additional gold to the lobby leader. I'm going to wind up selling off the prized pig so I can pick up this wizard's familiar, and that's when I find Skip's Puzzle Rune. And Skip's Puzzle Rune, a little bit awkward with the fact that we have the secret stash, but we have a pair in the form of the sleeping princesses. So maybe we will be able to grab some bonus XP from that. We can see that this fallen angel also messing with the skips puzzle rune so pretty silly stuff and it's actually a really really close combat here and us with a ranged unit we are going to be able to just barely close it out there 
kind of an interesting game right now. I'm going to pick up a pair of vampires just because we need some treasures and tier three treasures might be okay. And then I'm just going to roll four triples of these treasures. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's wake up this sleeping princess first too. I forgot. That's that's also a pretty good move. Grab a 10-10. Why not? Then I'm going to roll and lock onto a shop here with sleeping princess and vampire. We could have potentially sold some things to try to pick up a triple this turn, though then we'd be playing down a unit, really regardless of which way you split it. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock onto these. And as I was about to say, this is kind of a silly combat because we are basically playing with a Wish Upon a Star this turn. If we win or tie this combat, then we will get to activate the puzzle rune next turn. If we lose this combat, then we will crack open our secret stash and therefore be unable to activate this puzzle rune. So a lot on the line playing up against opponent, an opponent with a gingerbread knight plus a power orb is going to mean that we do get a loss and lose our secret stash, but not all is lost because we are going to get three extra gold and we are going to get two tier three treasures this turn regardless, which can be pretty powerful. I'll take up the helm and then I will grab a Merlin's hat. I would certainly consider treasure map in this spot if we didn't already have the skips puzzle rune, which would then mean we need to find another treasure. So just going to pick up the hat and then roll and try to find some more spells to cast with Potion Master, get a little bit more tempo, and as well we are also looking for Sherwood Shore Shot at this point. So I'm going to wind up rolling past other things. The uh, Mad Mim I wasn't super interested in, but I might be interested in just picking up a Golden Chicken. It's a little bit awkward because I don't really want to cut any of this stuff, but I think it's just so good to pick up another pair in this spot that I wind up selling off my Ogre Princess so that I can hang on to my goat and pick up a pair of both Golden Chicken and hang on to my Sherwood Shore Shots. I think that's going to be good enough for us here, and it looks like this Loki isn't doing anything particularly impressive, so we are going to get away with that. And now, we just have to look for a Golden Chicken or a Sherwood Sure Shot, and we'll be pretty far ahead of the rest of the pack here. Definitely a little bit different of a game. Like I said, um, not really pursuing the Potion Master things that heavily. Really just using the early tempo from Potion Master to firstly pursue prized pig gold and then pursue this skips puzzle rune. And we are going to be able to activate the puzzle rune here, completing on the golden chicken and noble steed. Quite good when you are up to XP, because that is going to allow us to activate a Hercules much easier. Not even like one more XP. Let's go up full three XP at this point. Got to figure out what I want to sell, and I'm just going to wind up uh, the ending the Mad Mim. So now next turn, I will be on uh, 6.0, and we will start to look for Hercules and other assorted relevant units. I think that we are still pretty strong here. We've got one absolutely massive unit in the hands of this Wizards Familiar with a helm attached. The rest of our things are a little bit on the smaller side, but this Wizards Familiar just being absolutely massive, I think should be able to go the distance here. Uh, we actually wind up losing to the range unit if we'd uh, won that 50-50 the other way. We would have... Uh, tied the combat, taken a little bit of damage. Not the worst thing in the world, though. See a mix of whistle here. It's free, so we might as well cast it. I don't really have a great target to cast it on at this point. Possibly just the goat. I go for the vampire. It's it's kind of all the same. The vampire is not really doing too much for us. But here is the important part. We wind up being able to pick up a Hercules, and there's even an additional tier six unit in this shop that I think I'm pretty interested in. Thing is, tier seven treasures, as I've said many times before, just so good with trees. So I'm gonna wind up picking up an Ashwood Elm and casting a Gigantify on it, giving it a bunch of extra health. And Hercules is looking to give us a tier seven treasure pretty quickly. I'm gonna put it in the Haunted Helm slot for now. I know that Ashwood works better in the Haunted Helm slot, but I just want to get as many hits on this Hercules as possible. And you can see it does actually survive there because 
because it is in the helm slot. Now it's going to get attacked by my opponent's ranged unit regardless, and we're going to take some damage, but I think that it is still a pretty good strategy. Here we can go for the Blaze of Glory on Hercules. That's going to put it up to 37, which is conveniently enough to allow it to activate in two. So definitely going to want to keep that in the helm slot this turn, and we are poised to pick up a tier seven treasure. From there, I'm going to pick up an Echo Wood and lock onto an Evil Twin, because Evil Twin with Hercules is just so good. It's definitely worth six gold, uh, as I had done it previously. So yeah, next turn, we are hopefully going to be grabbing a tier seven treasure and then Evil Twinning Hercules to potentially set up another tier seven treasure in just a short bit. And then there is also a mix of whistle in the shop that we could potentially use if we get a tree relevant treasure. And there's a bunch of them. Uh, then we will look really, really good for having picked up this Ashwood Elm here. And if not, there's still some other things like I'm thinking, okay, it would be silly, but Black Prism would be absolutely insane. Uh, and I'm very much willing to pick up a Black Prism here. But we'll see what we wind up having as our options. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. It's not going to be Black Prism. Don't get don't get too excited. Uh, Black Prism Evil Twin, obviously a whole bunch of fun. But our options are going to be Holy Grail, which is pretty good at this stage of the game. World Tree, which is just like the best treasure in the game. Or Round Table, which is really, really good. That's one of those big treasures that I was talking about right now. But I'm going to go for World Tree. The point being that I am planning on finding another tier 7 treasure pretty quickly here. I do have to decide if I want to mix a whistle first, but ultimately decide that because I am dropping the hat, I don't want to pick up the mix a whistle. I just want to try to play um, this uh, Hercules and, and make that my main consideration on my board. So going to then pick up Green Knight just to be able to put Hercules to 46 health. That'll allow us to grab a treasure from that a little bit sooner. And Ashwood Elm is also going to pump up our Hercules. So it activates in two here. Pretty close to activating. However, my opponent's Court Wizard is going to snipe it. So that is really unfortunate. That will delay us a turn on how quickly we can activate this Hercules. But it's not going to be too big of a deal. We still win this combat despite playing that one health Echo Wood in the back line. We really do want some better tier 6 units like Burning Beard and Lordy. And we wind up rolling and picking up onto that right now. I'd also take a Court Wizard at some point. But I like a lot of this other stuff that we got going on and from here because we're potion master i'm actually considering just rolling for an additional evil twin uh, i wind up settling for uh, some stone skin right here just a little bit more attack on everything with pumping up this ashwood elm but I thought that that would be really cool to find another evil twin. And the, the point that I was making there is that Potion Master is seeing two spells in every shop. So you're a little bit more likely to find it. And if we're like churning out tier seven treasures here, it's pretty cool because of the fact that we are pumping up these Hercules so significantly that an evil twin Hercules would almost be able to activate in one. You'll see it has 95 attack here. We can probably get it to have five more attack if we find another Hercules. So really, really close to just churning through some tier seven treasures. And that is what I would say is the real spicy brew in this game. We are going to wind up picking up another tier seven treasure this turn. And the question is like, do we want Excalibur, which is really good with the world tree? Or do we just want to take round table, which is insane on our current board because Ashwood Elm will give all of our characters a whole bunch of attack. Round table will We'll round them down and then Echo Wood will get all of those stats from everything, which is pretty incredible. So from here, I'm going to wind up eventually finding that Ashwood Elm in the Helm slot. We are going to hang on to the Helm and toss the Noble Steed eventually. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix a whistle on our newly created upgraded Hercules. And then I will try to roll for a few more trees or level six units or something. 
wind up just settling on a fog. I think that's totally fine. And then locking onto another Ashwood Elm. But it's not going to matter because we are absolutely massive here. Jormungand is going to have no shot at slaying against us. And we've got an Echo Wood with almost 2,400 health in the back line. So we were feeling pretty good that game. Really powerful stuff and really fun to be able to churn out multiple tier 7 treasures in the endgame on a hero that isn't typically known for having crazy endgame treasures, but we were able to take that early game tempo and turn it into something absolutely crazy. That is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lux given. Peace. This week's giveaway word is dust. Each week I use a new code word that's just to distinguish who's commenting for which week and the reason I have you guys say a code word that way I can tell who is interested in the dust and who's just commenting to say hi or that they enjoyed the video stuff like that. You can definitely do both just make sure you include this week's code word. You can also enter as many times as you want per week once per video you can go back leave comments on old videos just make sure they include this week's word but there's no limit to how many times you can enter other than i guess the amount of videos that i have and i've been putting out a bunch of storybook brawl videos since last october so yeah there are a bunch of opportunities to enter to win you can go through the backlog and watch some of those but it's been really fun to receive the comments from you guys, get that level of interaction. You can also come join me on my Discord, which I'm trying to grow right now, just so that I have one feedback on my titles and uh, thumbnails and things like that. But I also have some fun ideas for special game modes that I could make work with lobbies of players in the future. So feel free to check that out as well. There is a link to that in the video description. And and help me climb on my way to 1,000 subscribers. I'm, I'm getting there slowly but surely, and thank you guys all very much for your support.